before I begin, I want to make a big announcement. The full Evo calendar is now available for your Apple and Google calendar. I have created a calendar that tells the 13 moons, four market days, and different holidays and correlating rituals across the whole of Ebola, as well as breakdowns of what they mean and the stories behind them. This is available for all patrons who join our community to support this channel at patreon.com slash the medicine ocean. The concept of the four world ages reappears in the Hindu tradition on the Indian subcontinent. And according to the Hindu Vedas, the history of the world is broken into four distinct ages known as Yuga. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. But the four Yuga in, uh, in the Hindu accounts are the Krit Yuga, the Treta Yuga, the Dwapra Yuga, and the Kali Yuga. Now, what really took me back is how well they correlated in the nature of each of the Yuga with the four Yuga in uh, Igbo cosmology. The first era is Krit Yuga where humanity was said to be governed by the gods and existed as pure and without evil. It said that in this time, people were filled with righteousness and the Dharma bull stood on four legs. Dharma itself is a very vast concept and would require a whole video or probably several videos to fully explain, uh, but it parallels the Igbo concept of uh, chi with elements of eke and ofo. But if you understand the concept of eke well, it's a closer parallel to eke than anything. In short, it's how something is manifest, which determines purpose and order. Uh, the legs of the Dharma bull communicate balance, order, and righteousness in the universe and individual. The more legs on the ground, the more balanced and whole the Dharma is in the universe. So in the Krit Yuga, the Dharma bull is standing on four legs, which represents totality, balance, and happiness. This age is said to last 4,000 celestial years, and morning and night, 400 years each. This age is similar to the first world age in Igbo cosmology, known as Ugaka, not only because it's proposed that human beings in Ugaka were one with the gods, like in the Hindu tradition, but they were also free from any form of corruption. It's also said that this era predates agriculture, and human beings acquired things by manifestation of will alone, without effort or work. The major difference between Ugaka and the Krit Yuga is that in Ugaka, there is no death. And according to my research, in the Krit Yuga, human beings died after roughly 100,000 years. But by the end of the Krit Yuga, this had shrunk, or this lifespan had shrunk, to 10,000 years. It's also important to note that in Ugaka, human beings can go back and forth from life and death by their own volition, meaning that the human being in Ugaka can stay on earth and live for as long as they liked, and then choose to leave whenever they desired, as earth was seen as more of a vacation place from the real world, which was Aku, or the nest of Chuku. So one can interpret this going as death. The most striking comparison between Ugaka in Igbo cosmology and the Krit Yuga in the Hindu cosmology is that they're both the first age, and both traditions teach that human beings had no material bodies, but were instead light beings. The second age was the Treta Yuga, which correlates with Ugachi in Igbo cosmology. The Treta Yuga gets its name because it's said that the Dharma bull stands on three legs in this era. In the Treta Yuga, the powers of humankind have diminished, and the human connection to the universe and spirit has weakened from the first era, or, or the Krit Yuga. In the Treta Yuga, humans began to acquire material possessions, fight wars, and witness climate changes, which created the oceans and deserts. The Treta Yuga is when human beings developed an awareness of what my research called universal magnetism. Now, universal magnetism allows human beings to understand the forces of nature or what we would call the Abara in Igbo cosmology. The most interesting parallel between the Treta Yuga and the Ugachi in Igbo cosmology is that in this era, human beings began to understand or build their understanding of the forces of nature. In Igbo cosmology, this is when contact was reestablished with the Abara, or the spirit forces of the universe, and when the Arushi, or temples and shrines, were first built to channel the connection to the Abara. This is also the era in both the Igbo and Hindu traditions where human beings began to do sacrifices. I couldn't personally find much difference between the Treta Yuga and the idea of Ugachi, but again, I'm not an expert on the um, on Hindu cosmology, so if anybody knows more, comment below. The third age is the Dwapra Yuga, which parallels Ugaun and Igbo cosmology. In the Dwapra Yuga, human beings began to worship deities and temples and the human life expectancy had shrunk to 1,000 years. 
In the Hindu Third Age, human beings became more deceitful, and the reduction in their character introduced things such as disease and desire. But in this era, human beings also realized that their source of misfortunes was their straying from their dharma, and thus began to deliberately strive for righteous living and to align themselves with their dharma in order to fix these problems. Now, it's important to note that in the Hindu accounts, these ages are strongly linked with the activities of the gods, which I won't go into in this video. But it's hard to speak of this particular era without mentioning the fact that this is the era by which Krishna returned to his celestial abode. But the Dwapra Yuga and Ugaun feature human beings applying human solutions to their problems. In my research on the Dwapra Yuga, I saw that the age was defined by a rise of what we would now define as mortal or modern problems. And Ugaun featured the same in Igbo cosmology. One major difference is that in the Hindu account, individuals began using temples and shrines in this particular era, whereas in the accounts of our ancestors, or the Igbo account, that was done in the era prior, though I would be interested in knowing if there was a difference between the temples and shrines of our ancestors in both of those eras. The final yuga in the Hindu account is the Kali Yuga, which aligns with Ugazi in Igbo cosmology. In this age, the Dharma bull stands on one leg, and the spiritual capacity of human beings has reduced to one-fourth of its full potential, which was witnessed in the first age in the Hindu account, or the Krita Yuga. In the Kali Yuga, the human lifespan has shrunk to a hundred years, and the name Kali itself tells a lot about the era, as it's defined as a time of strife and discord, which aligns with the meaning of the word. This age began when Krishna left the earth at the end of the Dwapra Yuga, and like Ugazi, this is an age of spiritual degeneration, chaos, and constant conflict, as well as a reduced ability by human beings to access the spiritual. And that is it. Let me know what you think below. I found it very interesting that the uh, Hindu accounts of the four world ages and the Igbo accounts of the four world ages lines up almost perfectly. You know, one thing that always gets brought up when discussing um, Igbo history is this possible connection with um, the uh, Hebrews of the Old Testament. And one of the things that gets said often is because there's so many uh, quote-unquote parallels between the uh, Igbo culture and the Hebrew culture. It leaves me to wonder how well the people who say this know the other cultures of the world. Uh, because as I study Igbo cosmology and I apply what I already know or what I come to find out about cultures in different parts of the world, uh, the parallels are staggering and consistent. Um, and uh, you'd be very surprised as to where you would find these parallels. So anyways, this is Derek O'Fodermo with The Medicine Shell. Uh, let me know what you think below. And as always, thank you.